So, Commissioner, just so you know, Mike put on the slide. <laughs> good to know. Good to know. Okay. Can you hear me now? <laughs> if you want to mute, you have to hold it down. It doesn't stop it. Well, they're all unmuted now. And then when you let go, it's back on. Okay. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, this year, the commission is going to be going to develop a strategic plan. Um, that is something that we have been talking about for uh, quite a long time. Uh, we want to define our vision for the future, identify commissioners' priorities, goals, objectives, and responsibilities. Today's meeting is just the first step in that process. This is obviously going to be a long process. Currently, the commission does not have a strategic plan, um, and we're going to fix that. Uh, we're <laughs> the planning process now uh, is to move forward with uh, that ongoing process. Today, Julie Kolozuski. Did I say that wrong? Close, close enough. Okay. No, with, it's not. Wait, how, you how do you pronounce it? For us, Julie. Uh, Kolozuski. Oh, I was close. I was darn close. Wow. Yeah. Good morning. I wonder if there's a relation. Are you related? <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> Coming through Ellis Island. I'm sure there was some mix up there. Yeah. Um, from Caltrans Office of, of Strategic Management is here to provide an overview of the steps that Caltrans um, is taking while they're preparing their 2020-24 strategic plan. Um, Thank you, Director Tavares, for joining us today. We always appreciate you um, and your input into our processes, and thank you for joining us. Please note, um, today's meeting is not to comment on Caltrans' strategic plan. We're just hearing their process. Um, I'm sure we're going to love it, but we won't, we won't talk about that. Um, it's information only. We're not going to take any action today. Uh, we're just going to learn from uh, Caltrans and how they got there started and where we go from here. So with that, I will turn it over to Douglas to give us some instructions. Thank you, Madam Chair. We're going to start off with roll call, if that's all right with you. Please. Commissioner Bradshaw. Present. Commissioner Cruz. Commissioner Falcone. Present. Commissioner Grisby. Present. Present. Vice Chair Guardino. Present. Commissioner Lugo. Present. Commissioner Liu. Here. Commissioner Norton. Present. Commissioner Tavoloni. Chair Eager. Here. Senator Newman. Assemblymember Wilson. Madam Chair, we have a quorum. Thank you, Douglas. Welcome to the CTC Strategic Plan Overview Workshop. The CTC exists to make transportation planning, funding, and policy more understandable and accountable. Our workshops can take place in diverse locations around the state so that commissioners and staff can hear directly from our stakeholders around California. We are pleased to now offer workshops in hybrid and fully virtual format to allow stakeholders the opportunity, opportunity to participate more fully no matter where you are. The workshop agenda is located on our website at www.catc ca.gov. Live closed captioning is available on this webinar. Please select the show captions tab at the bottom of your screen. There are a number of language options available there to choose from. Any document the CTC creates can be translated into any language you need. Simply email us at ctc at catc .ca .gov, and we will have them returned to you as quickly as possible. For all of our workshops, we encourage interaction with our stakeholders. There will be opportunity for questions and comments at the end of this workshop. For those attending via Zoom, you should see the webinar control panel likely located at the bottom of your screen. There you'll find the raise hand and Q&A tabs. We encourage you to use the raised hand feature as soon as we reach the public com comment item to give the system time to acknowledge you. Commission staff will let you know when it's your turn to make your comment. Alternately, you may use a, you, you may use the Q&A tab to submit your comment or question in writing. Commission staff will read that on your behalf. As a reminder, each registered attendee is provided a unique link to access the webinar. These should not be shared with other participants as this can create confusion for staff when making comments. Please do your best to be concise. Please make sure that your comments add new information. If you agree with the comments of a previous speaker, simply make that statement. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Douglas. And um, Julie, we call Paul, Paul G. So I'm going to call you Julie K. We're going to turn Perfect. it over to you now to go over the strategic plan overview. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. 
Okay, great. Thank you so much for having me. Good morning, everyone. And I, I want to share Blair Thompson is here as well, um, my supervisor. So um, we really are here today. We spoke a little bit with Paul and Casey just kind of about Caltrans process for um, coming up with our strategic plan, what that looks like from the contracting phase to uh, for a facilitator all the way through the launch of our strategic plan. So I want to just share with you a little bit today our process in, de in the development um, of our strategic plan for 2024, 2020 to 2024. And now we're in the next phase of developing our next iteration of the strategic plan, really just as insight for how the commission may, you know, go about approaching this for themselves, for yourselves. Um, as mentioned, I'm not planning to go into the details about Caltrans current iteration of the strategic plan and how we got where we are or why we're focusing on any specific goals, but rather just share out some information. Um, so that is what uh, we'll do. Um, next slide, please. <clears throat> I just wanna give you a little overview of kind of all of the things that I uh, plan to cover. And then of course, uh, if there are questions throughout, feel free to ask questions at the time or at the end, either way is, is totally fine with me. But I wanna share out just the core elements of our current strategic plan that Caltrans has, go through the development process from start to finish, um, what that, that looks like for us might not be exactly what it looks like for you all. So I'm going to kind of share a, a more generalized uh, process as well, uh, given that the size of our organizations are substantially different. Um, a general timeline, the process that we've gone through to obtain a facilitation contract uh, to help have a consultant come and help facilitate this process for us. Um, and then just, then just what we're looking at for the Caltrans 2024 to 2028 strategic plan. Um, so what changes we're expecting, what engagement uh, we are looking at in alignment to our other state agencies, some of the lessons learned. And then, again, there'll be time for um, questions, but also we have a few uh, discussion questions that we'll pose to the commission for consideration as well and um, for you all to engage. Next slide, please. Okay, so... Um, this is really just a, a poster that we've created with all of the core elements of our strategic plan. This is really at the tail end of the planning process when we come up with uh, marketing materials for our staff, for the public, <clears throat> and all of our stakeholders. Uh, so I'm going to kind of get into each of these details. I realize that this might be a little bit difficult to see. Um, one of the things I wanted to note, though, as we're uh, part of this process and this comes towards the end, is you'll see some iconography um, associated with the vision, the mission, the values, um, and the goals. And we really use those icons as um, a way for our staff to really recognize those priorities that we're focusing on. Um, just something to consider as you kind of go through the development phases. Um, but I'm going to take some time to go through each of the core elements and of the current strategic plan as a reference point, which might be helpful to understand the overall framework, knowing that over time, we're going to see some changes here in the near future as we are in our development process right now. So next slide, please. Okay, so the kind of at the crux of the strategic plan is having an understanding of the process uh, or the purpose of the organization, which is defined in the mission statement, and clearly identifying the de desired future state, uh, where you're headed as an organization, the North Star, if you will, uh, which is outlined in the vision statement. So Caltrans current mission statement is to provide a safe and reliable transportation network that serves all people and respects the environment. And as we're going through this, we're really trying to answer the question of why do we exist and for whom do we exist to serve? Um, that is outlined in, this, in the mission statement. And then that vis vision statement really tells people uh, where we're trying to head, what our desired future state would be. And for right now, Caltrans vision statement is a brighter future for all through a world-class transportation network. Um, really should be in inspirational um, and have a kind of a feeling of hope for the future, if you will. Um, but of all of the elements, these two piece, pieces really lay the foundation for the rest of the plan. And it's critical pieces to align and rally the organization, the staff around, um, and, and the, the stakeholders, the public, as we are public servants as well. Um, so ideally, the mission and the vision statement are short and really easy to understand. Um, particularly for your staff, that they feel that they 
have a, a role to play in, in those elements specifically. Um, and then the core values are really the desired behaviors, kind of the foundation of the organization that you wanna see illustrated in your employees and the principles that you really want to adhere to. Uh, Caltrans currently has five core values, engagement, equity, innovation, integrity, and pride. And these are really the things that we communicate to our staff that are important to us, uh, the principles that we expect out of our behaviors and really showcases to the, to the stakeholders and public as well, you know, where our foundation is and, and what we're expecting out of ourselves as an organization. Next Just, slide, please. If I could ask a question. Oh, here. yes, of course. And you're probably going to it in one of the other sections, but was the mission statement already in place when you started the strategic plan or did you develop the mission statement and the vision statement uh, as you developed this particular plan? Great question. Yeah, for this particular, the 2020 to 2024 strategic plan, we really started with a clean slate and the development of all the elements of the strategic plan. Um, so the mission and the vision statement are different from previous versions. Um, and really we started from, from scratch. I will say in the current uh, process that we're going through, um, we're taking a different approach. And instead of starting fresh from zero, we're really looking at the current mission and vision and asking ourselves the question of, does this serve us still? Is this still relevant to who we are as an organization and where we're trying to go in the future? And really that is something that may evolve over time as the organization evolves, as transportation evolves. Um, and so every time that we go through this process, we do look at those, those core elements just to make sure that this really is still who we are and where we're going. Does that answer your question? So this is the 2024 plan and you're starting now with your 24, 28 plan yes. starting today? Okay, so this is in place and they're, they have a new process starting. May, may. Yes. Vice Chair Gardino has a question for you. Julie, thank you for joining us today and for all the a department's great work on this. We're going to learn a lot from what you have done, and we appreciate that. Um, if if you could go back one page, um, I love it. I, I I know you love it as much as I do when outsiders want to wordsmith mm -hmm. your good work. <laughs> um, uh, I, um, I I think the mission statement is excellent. I was surprised um, that it doesn't include about four more words. Uh, provide a safe and reliable transportation network that strengthens California's economy and serves all people and respects the environment. That's my two cents for what it's worth. Thank you for that feedback. And it is something that we wrestle with as an organization when we're sorry, um, when we're going through this process. It's it's a balance between sharing out what it is that you do and what your purpose is and for whom, and also making it um, concise enough that people remember it and really that staff can um, live up to it. Right. So there is a balance there, and and it takes a little finessing. Sometimes you can't encaps encapsulate everything that you do. You don't necessarily have to, um, but you know it, there's a lot of opinions. So thank you. And Julie, I know my, my goal today, and I won't speak for my colleagues, is really just to learn from you anyway. So thank you for allowing me to 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 make that comment from the cheap seats uh, <laughs> and uh, I'll let you continue uh, as again my goal is to learn learn from you in the department today absolutely I appreciate that feedback if there are any other questions please feel free otherwise if you could go to the next slide okay so um, the next kind of core element is really uh, the goals, and the goals are really the overarching priorities or focus areas that the department feels uh, it needs to 
focus on over the course of time based on a risk assessment that we've done. Um, they're really broad statements that assert the direction of the organization, um, the direction we're going to take in order to achieve that ultimate goal of the vision. You know, um, So everything that is part of the strategic plan are, are building blocks to help us achieve that, that vision, that desired future state. Um, so as we, beyond the goals, we continue to develop the plan by identifying outcomes that we intend to achieve by focusing on these goal areas. Um, and that is supported through also determining strategies, how we're going to achieve the goal. Um, and those are really the links between planning and implementation. So I haven't included all of that on here, but for, for the time being, Caltrans goals are safety first, cultivate excellence, which is an inward look at our, our, our organization, um, enhance and connect the multimodal transportation network, strengthen stewardship and drive efficiency, lead climate action, and then advance equity and livability in all communities. And really the goals stem from, as I mentioned, doing a risk assessment. And I'm gonna get into that in a little bit uh, as we talk about the process. Um, but there are some additional elements associated with the strategic plan. The actions and the performance objectives are really the implementation piece of that. And that's not something we include in the, the strategic plan that's um, you know public facing, but it is something that internally we utilize to keep us on track and measure our progress towards getting to that desired future state. Next slide, please. Yeah, can I ask a question? Of yes, course. Commissioner Liu. Um, I've been through strategic planning processes, and I, I know this is always kind of pops up, and I wonder how you handled it. Uh, Joe Liu here. Um, how do you determine the difference between a strategy and a, a, or, and a goal and an objective? And do you have criteria for determining what those objectives are in terms of their measurability and trackability and reporting back parts of it? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so the the goals are intended to be kind of broad statements, not necessarily telling you how you're going going to do anything. That really is the strategies really tell us the how, you know, what our approach will be. Um, so we kind of look at the risks uh, facing the department and that helps us to identify really what are those big buckets, those goal areas that we need to put our resources into, that we need to prioritize, that are also separate and distinct from the operational stuff that we just do as an organization, right? None of that is really included in, that, in this. There's a ton of things that Caltrans does that is just part of our operations. Those things we're not focusing on, it's specifically uh, really trying to um, look at the risks, and that includes opportunities and threats, uh, facing the department and understanding what are these big buckets. So um, that's that's the first input really into the process. Um, as far as identifying um, performance metrics and, and those sorts of lower level kind of more detailed pieces, we really look at what is quantifiable. You know, when we talk about um, outcomes, we're looking for things that we can actually measure towards. Like, do what do we have data for? What kind of data, if we don't have data now, can we create a, a way to measure these things? There's, It's not always, um, for, for example, in the current strategic plan with advanced equity and livability, that was a really a new uh, approach for us. We didn't have a lot of data around that. And so we had to create it. Right. We had to create tools that allow us to collect the data so that we can then measure. Um, so really, we're looking for things that are measurable. If we can't measure it, then we we can't know if we're achieving our goals. So when we come to uh, performance objectives and thinking about our actions, we're looking at, you know, those smart, that smart thing, specific, measurable, actionable, time bound and realistic um, are really pieces that we need to consider. Thank you. Any other questions on this so far? Okay. Okay, excellent. If you could uh, go to the next slide, please. Okay, so this is a, kind of a process map for Caltrans strategic plan development process. I'm gonna walk you through this a little bit, but just know that it may look different. Um, when it comes to strategic planning, there isn't 
necessarily a one size fits all. It really is dependent on the organization. So um, things may may or may not be necessary for the commission, but we really start the strategic plan process with a risk assessment. Caltrans goes through a risk assessment every two years with the SLAY report, um, but also we kind of do those regularly as well um, throughout the organization. So we look at, for us, we focus on the opportunities and threats. What are the opportunities and threats that are facing the organization? What are those emerging trends that we're seeing that we need to really plan for to either capitalize on or mitigate for? Um, so that is really the first step in understanding where we need to head as an organization and what is kind of coming our way. Um, so we do the risk assessment and that involves several different inputs. Um, I'll go through that a little bit more on the next slide and what some of those things are. Um, but really looking at a holistic view of the organization as, as an entire uh, entity. Um, and then from there, part of what we do is executive interviews with our executive board. And through that process, we create what's called an environmental scan, which is really a, a reference document that allows us to look at really all those opportunities and threats, um, all of that information that we've collected that tells us about the environment that we're living in today. And we know that evolves over time. And so it's really important that this is part of a, an ongoing process. Um, from there, uh, we go through a strategic planning a session, generally with the executive board, where we define those core elements. Um, we are in that process right now uh, with the next iteration of our strategic plan. And this is where we're really looking at what, what is the mission? D does the mission we have now still serve us? Do we need to amend that in kind of any kind of way? Uh, what is the, the vision? Same for values and goals. Um, so we're really looking at that. Um, right now for Caltrans, we're, we feel like we're on the right path and we're going through a refresh process, looking at what we have, making small tweaks, but knowing that we're, we're on the right path based on that risk assessment that we've done. Um, from there, we uh, go through a review, or I'm sorry, we define the goal statements. So we identify what the goal is, that overarching broad statement, and then we define what that means so that readers understand when we say safety, what do we mean by that? And so on and so forth. Um, and really outline what are the outcomes. Um, when we identify those goals, the next step is, okay, if we're going to focus on safety, for example, what do we intend to achieve? What is the end result that we expect to have happen by focusing on that, uh, on that goal? From there uh, at Caltrans, we put together goal development teams that help us to identify the strategies. So the, the how, the bucket statements of how we're going to achieve these uh, goals. Um, and then we put together teams for that priority action planning um, and performance objective setting. And, and in this phase, we're really looking at those uh, cross-functional actions that are really going to impact the entire department um, and how we need to coordinate and make that happen. Um, in, at Caltrans, because we are such a large organization, we have subject matter experts that help uh, create a goal development team that are inputs to that process and really help us center around, you know, what's going on in the organization and what we have access to. Then our uh, executive board will review that final strategic plan, those core elements and um, all of the actions and performance objectives. Throughout this process, kind of concurrently, but before launching, we come up with our marketing and communication materials. So part of this is really engaging staff throughout the process to make them you know, buy into the end result and uh, having them come along with us. And then really uh, communicating out to everybody, what is the direction of the department? What are our priorities? All of those things. Um, and then externally as well. So we develop those internal and external communication materials, and then um, and then it's time to share that with the world. And um, that's really the final step is is the launch. Um, I do have a question here, Julie. In this okay. process, <clears throat> excuse me, it looks like every step here is internal. Am I right? <clears throat> so um, there's no there's yes. no external um, communication with partners or with the 
community at large. This is this is all done internally. Is that right? All of the like the the decision making and the conversations happen internally. We do engage with stakeholders um, and some partners on gathering some feedback or input around what we've what we're coming up with and what we're you know what our intentions are. So that is a part of the process. Um, what stage would that come in if we were going to add that to ours? I'm going to go through that in just a second, but okay. uh, we're, so we're in the process right now where we've identified what those core elements are, the vision, mission, values, goals. And once we have that, then we go out and ask for feedback and input um, or reaction to, depending on what your intentions are, reaction to um, what those core elements are. So in between where we do that strategic planning session, um, right, right around that um, phase, once we've kind of settled on what that's going to be, we do that outreach. Okay, thank you. M Madam Chair. Um, just to clarify, so your environmental scan, is is that a equivalent to a SWOT analysis? It can involve a SWOT analysis, yes. Okay, yes. so so to clarify the, the chair's earlier question, so a SWOT analysis is both internal and external, right? Yes. All right, cool. Uh, okay. Yes. I have a question. Yes. Make yeah. Thank you, Chair, and thank you for the questions, Chair, because it, it it actually relates to um, my thoughts in terms of you know how you socialize this this document because it does essentially act as your north star um, and hopefully a living document that is actionable. Um, Caltrans being such a vast organization, you know, how are you socializing it even deeper beyond, um, you know, your executive level, you said that you're going to talk, you know, you're going to share it with your staff and external, um, uh, external stakeholders. Does that include your contractors? Um, yeah, you know, can you kind of dive a little bit deeper in, into that process and then how, you know, how do you, how do you really empower this document with, um, with those, uh, you know, with 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 Caltrans, the organization, and and your external partners. Yeah, I can. Um, so I I will start by saying there's no necessarily right or wrong way to approach it, but the way that that we're approaching it as an organization is to gather the input from our staff and our and our external partners, and and that's really specific in this go round um, who we're looking for input from. Um, from an external perspective, but it really depends on the organization, right? Um, and that also goes for at which point do you engage those those individuals? But as far as the staff go internally, I think one of the things that's really important for us, not only in the development process of um, just bringing staff along and making them feel like they're part of the process, um, it's also just keeping the the strategic plan relevant through throughout time. So when we as an organization talk to our staff, we're really trying to tie things back to the goals that we're focusing on as an organization so that um, it stays relevant. Um, and so we'll ask for feedback on those core elements, the mission, vision, values, goals with our staff. Another thing that can happen depending on the size of an organization other than what we'll be doing is surveying our staff. Uh, sometimes focus groups are a part of that when you have a smaller organization, it's much easier to engage staff in those focus group settings to get their buy-in and really actually have them active parts of the process if that's what you'd like to do. Um, but throughout is just the communication. So we will have our director Tavares uh, create a video that goes out to our staff to let them know that we're in the process of developing our strategic plan so they're aware that this change is even happening. Um, and then we will ask them to re react to what that um, those core elements are that the executive board has come up with. Um, once we've done that, we'll continue to create communication materials that we that we share with our staff along the way. But largely, it's really once once we have um, those core elements defined, we bring in our subject matter experts, and we have a. I think we had over 300 various individuals participate as part of goal development teams in this last iteration of our strategic plan to help us identify what are the actions that we need to take? Um, how are we going to get there? How are we going to measure this? So we we engage staff that way. 
another thing on our side that we do is um, like that lower level action planning. So we do engage a large portion of our staff in helping to identify actions that they will participate in um, that support the goals in the strategic plan. So it really gets down to um, most of our staff engaged in the process of identifying actions that they can take to support the strategic plan goals. And that helps them to see where they fit in. Um, one of the things that staff really want is a purpose, right? And they want to feel like they have a purpose in the organization. And so allowing them to create actions that they will take that support the goals is, is how we do that. Um, and then it's just an ongoing conversation. We put out um, communication guides for our supervisors to help them have conversations with our staff. The director and the district directors and the deputy directors have conversations with their staff. Um, we will have kind of a launch video that we send out that helps explain the elements and how we got to where we're, we're going and help with that storytelling piece to bring people along as well. So there's a lot of communication that goes into it. And it's really leveraging those change management techniques um, to bring people along with you. And so they don't feel that change is happening to them, but that they're part of the process. Thank, thank you. you I think Director Tavares wanted to make a statement. Thank you, Chair. Um, and just want to thank Julie and, and Blair and the entire strategic management team at Caltrans. They've been phenomenal in helping us move forward with our next iteration of, of our strategic plan. In addition to the internal engagement, as Julie was talking about our staff, um, I want to fully engage and ensure that we're bringing together our tribal governments, our community-based organizations, not just our transportation, local and regional partners, but all those community-based and NGOs and bike and ped advocates to weigh in and provide input on, is our mission correct? Is our vision correct? Are our goals correct going forward? And, and have that engagement and have them part of this discussion as well. So there's going to be a very robust uh, communication and engagement process as we go forward on this. Great, thank you. Thank you. Um, and <clears throat> just so we're clear, excuse me. <clears throat> The, the questions are not to critique no. the Caltrans plan, because that's not what we're here for today, to comment or critique. It's um, to look at what you're doing and how do we want to tweak it as we move forward with ours, or if it's working perfectly, just to uh, copy it. Uh, but as we move forward, um, hopefully Julie and Blair and, and Director Tavares, you know that these questions are on on uh, going in that direction. Is As we start looking at what is it that we want to do, are there things that we should add um, or does this work, you know, um, great. So the fact that you added that in, that you are planning on doing that, that's helpful as we write down our notes of, yeah, we want to make sure we do that too. Thank you. I had a question about technology and I think we're finding that the rate of change, especially in um, infrastructure and energy and mobility is really extraordinary. And you've got a lot of unsolicited bid projects because we just don't have frameworks for how things move. Um, how are you handling that? That How does that become part of your strategic plan? How are you focusing on the future and looking at how technology and all of this innovation is affecting in infrastructure and mobility delivery of the future? And I see is Blair that a question has his hand up. Does he want to answer it? <laughs> yeah, both both of you is fine. And okay. The director Tavares too. Yeah. Good. Good morning, everybody. Everybody. Um, I wanted to go really quickly go back, if I may, just to add a little additional context that the communication process for the strategic plan doesn't end once we launch the plan. There's an ongoing reporting cycle. We we uh, put out uh, what we call our mile marker um, publication. I'm sure you've seen, possibly seen that, uh, which is uh, similar to a magazine. It, it tells the story of our strategic plan across time. It includes our performance uh, metrics. So you can kind of track along with us the successes or challenges we may be having in achieving some of our um, targets uh, to achieve for the, each of our goals. And it does it does tell the story. So that's a public facing uh, document. So we're telling this story with uh, the folks of California, as well as an internal reports that we provide to all staff. And so we communicate this living document as it's 
uh, going through its four-year cycle. Uh, one other piece that um, is also really important on that in kind of environmental scan is we do, um, obviously, we need to have align to where the administration is going, as well as our um, our part, our very core partners to make sure that we are uh, not just off doing our own thing, but uh, we're uh, very well aligned with where the uh, state of California is going as it relates to transportation. So then taking that back over to your, your question about technology, a lot of that comes out in our risk assessments. We, we um, do that broad conversation and we pull information from folks and technology and, and emerging um, ways of doing business continues to be something that we have to pay attention to. And we consider that we do have a, a core value of innovation and we um, have a, a uh, innovation board that uh, focuses on pushing innovation throughout the organization and how we can use these advancing tools to uh, do business better and achieve the goals that we've set for ourselves. So I hope hope that answers your question and I'll turn it back over to Julie. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I, I, would, I would also say, um, as Blair mentioned, yes, the innovation piece comes out in the risk assessment changes happening at a rapid pace. Um, it's hard to keep up as, as y'all know, sometimes change is happening faster than we can adapt. But we also, in addition to strategic plan, we have long-term visioning as well, right? So you're looking at those trends that are coming out um, throughout the world, what other countries are doing, you know, what are we expecting to come out of transportation in 20, 30 years from now? And um, so there's that long-term visioning as well that we can um, incorporate. Any other questions yet? Nope, I think we're okay. good. All right, mm -hmm. next slide, please. Okay, so as I mentioned, uh, the, the size of Caltrans and the size of uh, the CTC are very different. And so I wanted to put together a, a little bit more of a general development process that may be more akin to how you might approach this. Um, it's a little bit condensed in overall scope and time. Um, because there's probably fewer people that would be involved in the overall process. But again, it starts with that SWOT analysis, looking at um, you know strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And you can do that in a variety of ways, um, including interviews, those one-on-one -on -one kind of in-depth interviews, focus groups, and surveys. So those are generally the inputs to that process to understand kind of the current state of the organization, um, what you're doing well, what you're you know, opportunities might be, and then what's the environment that you're operating within? And also, as Blair mentioned, what are other transportation organizations akin to yours doing? Um, and that can not necessarily serve as what you will do, but maybe an input to the process. And then ultimately, you end up with that environmental scan, which can be utilized to understand the opportunities and risks and help frame what the goals are, help you identify what, what the goals are. Um, and from there, there's always a strategic planning session where you come up with, with the leadership team on what those core elements are going to be, the mission, vision, values, goals, strategies, outcomes. Um, and then there's kind of that implementation planning piece, the action setting, the performance objective identification, um, how you're gonna measure towards success. Um, again, we have a communication plan. It's really critical to identify who you're going to communicate with and how you're going to communicate with them. Um, it's not the same for every different uh, audience. And so, you know, targeting those specific audiences and with different uh, formats, different materials, et cetera. Um, and then there's always a, a review process for formal adoption of the language, the design, that end product, um, and then, you know, launching it out putting that on the webpage, sharing with stakeholders, sharing with staff, getting people excited about where you're going. Um, and as I mentioned before, it's a living document, right? As you mentioned, innovation is happening. Things are changing quickly. And so just a, a regular um, check-in or review of if you're still on the right track along the way. You know, Our plan is a four-year plan. A lot happens in four years. We make tweaks along the way to make sure that we're still in line with with the world that's around us. So just kind of, you know, regular annual reviews of, of where you're headed is really important. Um, okay. 
Next slide. I wanted to share out a little bit about the time frame for us on this process. It can definitely vary from one organization to another, depending on size, really heavily dependent on schedule availability to really make these things happen. Um, for Caltrans, we do have a facilitation contract, a consultant that is helping us to facilitate the meetings and the process. Um, that alone, that process for obtaining a contract for Caltrans was about six to eight months. Things happen for us. That process ended up taking us almost 15 months to actually get a contract executed. So I will say that with a caveat. Anytime you're doing contra uh, contracting, there are potential hurdles along the way. It's not always a smooth sale. But uh, generally speaking, six to eight months to get that contract in place. The strategic plan development itself is uh, for us around six to 12 months. We're probably on the longer end of that, just based on the size of the organization and how many people we have participating in the process. Um, but I've also done strategic plans for smaller organizations that are closer to a four month time frame. Again, really depends on who's involved and what their availability is. Um, and then as Blair had alluded to before, once the plan is developed, that is not the end. We do quarterly reporting to our staff and, as he mentioned, to the mile marker. What have we completed? Where are we with actions? Um, how are we doing on our performance measures? Those are the things that we report on a quarterly basis so that people understand you know, what's happening and that there is forward progress being made. And then, as I mentioned, uh, we do kind of an annual, ideally an annual review of the environment that we're in making sure we're still headed in the right direction and resources change, right? So where we thought we were going to have resources allocated, we might have to pivot because something has changed. And so we really do need to look at that on a regular basis because we are a public organization and we have finite resources. So we really need to make sure that we're prioritizing based on that, that North Star. And we use this as a guiding document for that. Julie, in that first six to eight months or however long it takes to get a contractor on board. Um, obviously for us, this is this first step that we're asking you to do for free. Would you, are there other things that we could be doing um, while we're waiting for that contract to go through that process um, so that we're not just sitting waiting, you know, for eight months for somebody to come on? Do you have some suggestions of what you all did during that process? Yeah. I mean, so I, I spoke with Casey a little bit. We talked about the scope of work, really identifying what you're looking for at the end, um, how robust you want this to be, what are, you know, what pieces. So going through that process process of knowing what you're looking for is really important. Um, for us, because we had a lot of delays in getting a contract just uh, executed, um, my staff took on some of the work to get the process moving. So we did those interviews up front. We have um, a risk assessment. And so those are some of the things that, you know, it really depends on your level of comfort doing those elements. But um, th that really is the foundation. Um, we can't do a whole lot of movement unless we've done that risk assessment, that SWOT analysis piece. So um other than that, I think, you know, as a commission understanding and just looking at some of those um, other organizations, what are people doing, kind of getting familiar with the future of transportation. Those are all things that that can be happening in the background um, while you're trying to get that contract executed. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Falcon. Yeah, I actually have a question maybe for you, um, Chair, or maybe... Tanisha, as we look at our own process and, you know, the fact that we are under, you know, the Bagley Keen, you know, what, what format do you foresee us engaging together um, in our formation of our own strategic plan? Is it going to be public? Is it, how does it look like um, to you just so that we are anticipating what this process is going to be like? I can tell you, um, and looking for, I think for the last six months on how do we get this started and what do we do? It was these kinds of formats. So it's mm -hmm. a more of a, like a workshop um, kind of format to, to start this process. Um, and then we'll, we'll certainly check with our attorneys on 
uh, what we do going forward. Um, did you have a different opinion about that? No, I think that's right. Um, some of this will be iterative because some of this will involve education as we make those steps on what the role of the commission is, what our power, our authority, and which direction we want to go within that power and authority on how we achieve some of the goals that we're talking about. It will also be coordination with the administration, Caltrans, and a lot of different entities around us. And so even though we may only have 46 staff, we have a very vast stakeholder group that we'll have to work within. And so that will take some time as well, but we'll be doing some of those things as we go. And we'd been talking with um, CalSTA and Caltrans about doing these things together so that our plans sort of move along together um, tra with transparency and in and, and open forum. Okay. Any other questions? No, I think we're good right now. Okay, um, if you could go to the next slide, please. Um, I just wanted to walk you through kind of the process for obtaining a facilitation contract. Uh, Casey and I talked a little bit about this offline, um, but really the first step is I, knowing what kind of contract you're seeking. Um, so identifying the type of contract and then writing that scope of work. I did share a Caltrans scope of work uh, as well for kind of a reference. Um, and then putting together all those contract documents. Um, I'm not sure on the delegated authority, but you'll have to go through that process and make sure you're adhering to, to that and um, leveraging DGS as well, uh, the Department of General Services for their uh, rules and guidelines around contracting. Um, I think uh, generally a request for proposal uh, takes about six to eight months. That's the kind of contract where um, you're seeking input from, um, it's it's really a best value. Let me just say that. And the consultant tells you their process and you can identify whether or not that's gonna work for you. Um, but again, you know, you, it may be generally six to eight months, but I would suggest to plan for potential delays um, depending on how that goes. There are things like, you know, contractors can protest the award, which can cause additional delays um, and just time frames of, um, DGS to process as well. So just things to keep in mind as you're going through that process of contracting. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, Cal as I mentioned, Caltrans is in the process right now of updating our strategic plan for 2024 to 2028, and we operate on a fiscal year in case that's um, ambiguous. But the executive board felt strongly we had a, a good and transformative strategic plan in 2020 to 2024, so the one I was just referencing. And so we didn't want to completely start anew this go round. Um, instead, in this iteration, we're kind of reviewing that risk assessment, looking at the changes around us that in the environment in which we operate, including legislation, state and federal priorities, uh, mandates to Caltrans, changes to transportation more broadly, and then the needs of the public uh, as well. And then we're looking at our current elements, those vision, mission, goals, values, and identifying, you know, can we recommit to this or where do we need to make tweaks uh, to what is currently um, in, in our strategic plan? And so we may have a lot of the same goals or priorities, but the how we get there, those strategies and actions um, we're expecting to see, those things are, are part of the change as well. And so we do expect to see some changes there. Um, we're also wanting to align with, with the state, uh, the future of the state of California. So what the governor's priorities are, our oversight agencies as well. Uh, we look to align so that we're all kind of moving in the same direction and we're not going somewhere that the state is not. And another thing is really uh, trying to simplify this where we can, make it easy for, for all of our stakeholders, including staff, to understand you know, wh what we're doing, why we're doing it, and where we're going. Um, and, and then we'll identify our outcome strategies, actions, and performance objectives. Um, so that's kind of where we're at right now, what we're expecting to have as an outcome of this next process, um, but we're still in the early stages. So not entirely sure how that's gonna land just yet. Next slide, please. Um, we talked a little bit about engagement and you asked some good questions about engagement, but we do begin 
that with our executive board with um, risk assessments and getting their opinions and um, you know from from their perspective where we need to go as an organization. We do include staff in our process, as I mentioned, where we can um, as part of that change management process through surveys um, and, and potentially focus groups. And I did want to call out there is an executive order that requires engagement of historically disadvantaged and underserved communities in strategic planning, uh, state strategic planning through fiscal year 2526. So we will have that outreach as well. And that's very targeted outreach to specific um, organizations and communities. Um, some of the ways that that can be done is through surveys, town halls, or any other public forum in which you may have an opportunity to participate. Um, so those are some of the ways in which we are um, rolling out the engagement broadly. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, and I kind of talked about this a little bit, but just making sure to align uh, where we're going with oversight agencies and the state more generally. So at Caltrans, we are aligning with the gubernatorial cycle. Um, we allow a little bit of time for the governor to take office, determine priorities at the state level. So in generally, we tie the launch of our strategic plan to about 18 months after the governor has taken office or been reelected to allow for any change that might happen in, in direction that we need to kind of um, go along with. Um, and then as part of the environmental scan, the initial assessment, we look at, again, what the governor's priorities are. CALSTA, our oversight agency, what they're focusing on. And also we do take a look at other state department of transportations as a reference, uh, the United States Department of Transportation. We look at kind of what their goals are, where they're focusing, not necessarily to dictate what we will prioritize, but really to make sure we're considering all of, you know, everything, right? So we we look at what other states are, are doing as well um, as kind of an input to that, that process. Next slide, please. One question. Oh, one. yes, go ahead. I appreciate the presentation and I didn't say it from the onset, but I really appreciate the department leading with the whole safety, uh, safety first element. That is always important um, to, to me and this us as a body. Uh, my question um, would be um, looking at some goals. How does the Caltrans strategic plan align with uh, regional goals or regional distinctions as far as priorities? That's a great question. And by you mean like more locally? Yeah, just like by region. Where, closer to the I'm sorry. Is it on? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, just how the state is very different, diverse. Um, how does Caltrans uh, strategic plan align with different regional goals and transportation priorities? Does it that's fit a, in? I think that's a good question. Um, I will say as part of our uh, executive board, we have all of our district directors who represent the different regions of California to help us have that perspective of you know, the constituents or the stakeholders that live in those areas as well as just that external engagement part. So as we go through and, and do our surveys and talk to some of those other um, underserved communities or even just our partners, uh, we we include a very, we have a very robust list of stakeholders that we include in the development of the strategic plan and also just an ongoing external partner survey. Um, so we I, I think our, our um, last survey included over 20,000 stakeholders that we reached out to. And so we really try to garner input from all areas of California, knowing we have a very diverse population of people and regions and, and perspectives. Um, does that, does that help answer no, the yeah. question? No, I appreciate their response. And I did take note of um, the emphasis on disadvantaged communities and that sort of prompted my question, so I appreciate the response for sure. And I guess to piggyback on that, because we as the commission, as we put our strategic plan together, we don't have district directors out there um, to get that information from. 
Um, but maybe we can piggyback on on getting the information out through them um, as we as we do these things together. That would be helpful. Great, thank you. Okay. Um, any other questions before I just share a little bit about lessons learned <laughs> in this process? Okay. So a couple of lessons learned from the last iteration and just you know times before. Uh, just as far as the time goes, we hope for the best and always plan for the worst. I, I, the last uh, time we did develop a strategic plan, we had really started that process in the end of 2019. And then, and then a pandemic came upon us and we really had to adjust. And so there are things that can happen. And so you have to be flexible a little bit along the process and in, in, in doing this and just adapt to the changes that might come up. Um, really critical to engage staff. I think we did a pretty good job in the last go round. Uh, we're hoping to do an even better job this time um, and getting them excited and understanding their role and their place is really important. Um, also finding those subject matter experts within the organization is really critical to identifying the best measurements, the, the what we can and cannot do or measure. Um, prioritizing actions. We have a plentiful, uh, we have a lot of ideas. We have a lot of things people want to do, um, but we do have to prioritize based on limited resources. So looking at those broad, you know, those big, bold, transformative things that we want to accomplish, what in reality can we do in the allotted amount of time? So prioritizing based on resources and um, just knowing the world around you. A strong communication plan, both internally and externally. Um, one of the things we're really trying to do this go around is be very clear and concise. You know, not more words are not better. Trying to keep it to the minimum that that really conveys what our priorities are in in the easiest way possible. Um, knowing that this is a public fa facing yeah. document, and we want all of California to know where Caltrans is going and be able to understand that. So that is always in the back of our mind as well. And then also just keep the plan relevant through active and ongoing discussion. We tie our accomplishments report back to the strategic plan. Um, the director often talks about um, things tying back to the strategic plan and those core four. Um, and so just keeping that messaging alive through all conversation continuously is really important. Next slide, please. Okay, so this is where I'm gonna turn it over to you all um, for uh, Casey and I and Paul and I talked a little bit about, you know, turning this back to the commission and thinking about what are some of the risks that uh, is facing your organization and transportation in the future. And then, you know, thinking more broadly, what is the future of uh, the CTC? What is your North Star? So really some discussion questions for you all to consider um, and any other questions you might have for us. Yeah, before we start our work, I, I I was hoping maybe you, now, now that you know, you know, our direction, um, certainly you all know what it is that we do and our, um, our responsibilities to the state. Um, after you've gone through your first iteration, um, do you have any suggestions for us on where we start with this? Because obviously this will be the very first strategic plan the CTC has ever done. Um, you have some of that expertise already. Um, so I don't know, Director Tavares, do you have a suggestion on how do we jump into that pool? You know, I'm going to I think Blair and Julie, they've been our experts in, in getting us going. Maybe I'll turn to them first and I can add some additional okay. information if that's all right. I mean, that's a great question. Uh, Blair, I don't know, you started talking, you might be on mute, but I, I think um, the, really just understanding your purview is very critical and then what is, happening in transportation around you? What is what is the environment? Um, having that discussion is really the first step. Um, these things can um, start to become operational in nature and really just focusing on 
less of the operational things that you're going to continue to do no matter what? And really, what are those strategic, those new things that you want to do? What changes do you want to make? What that do you want to see? Um, having those conversations is, is the jump off point. Um, Blair, anything else that may be helpful? I don't feel like that's very helpful. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, I think you're, you're heading in the right direction. Um, Julie, it, it's really important that you understand, you know, you, you're, you're starting at a point where understanding, we know what we do, we know what our charge is. Now let's look at where is the state going? Where is transportation going? And what are those ch critical changes that we need to make to how we do business that are going to turn us into the com commission we want to be in the future? There's there's a, a, a as is and a future state, a, a, a to be. Um, that is really a, a lot of the heavy lifting is getting, having those conversations and understanding, coming to some consensus around, uh, across the, the commission as, as far as where are we headed, where do we want to go? Because those are going to help you then jump into defining your purpose statement in a mission and a future state for yourselves in, in a vision. Um, there, uh, there are lots and lots of resources available um, online on how to do uh, good strategic planning. Um, some of those, um, yeah, I, I'm also, I'm, I'm also available to be able to chat if, uh, folks have specific questions after the commission, uh, meeting today that we will be able to answer some questions. And unfortunately, we're not able to do the facilitation ourselves at this time, but right, right. Um, <laughs> we're very free stuff here, right? <laughs> <laughs> but very happy to answer questions along the way. And um, we do, both Julie and I have years and years of experience um, in creating strategic plans and helping departments kind of define these elements. Sure. Um, so, um, Thank happy you. to help in any way we can i appreciate that and you know obviously if we want to start with you know we have you know by statute you know here's what here's what we have to do right we know we know that piece we have that on a piece of paper um but as we look to the future and as you know money goes up and down and you know we have, that's certainly the a threat as we move forward as a, a budgetary concerns um but we want to make sure that we have a plan in place so that um, our partners and the general public have, um, you know, that roadmap so that there's not those surprises out there that, you know, we're coming from left field and, you know, that's, that's not, that's not where we're supposed to be. We want to put that in place so people can follow along with us and join us in that process and join us as we, you know, head towards a, a, a better future for transportation. So I think that's some of our opportunities and and risks at the same time is, you know, we can say, here's who, we're, here's who we want to be, you know, 15 years from now. Um, but then, you know, during that process, you know, we have budgetary constraints in there. But even having said that, we want to make sure that um, that road still stays the same, no matter if, you know, we have $20 billion or $200 million, um, you know, that, that North Star is still that same, of that goal of making sure that we have a transportation um, um, system um, that's fair and equitable for all. So um, I guess how, those are my concerns is how do, how do we do that to make sure that the, the general public knows where we're going and what we're doing? Did you wanna add something, Tony? Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm glad you, you made those comments, Chair, thank you. Because as we're going through this new iteration at Caltrans, I've set the tone that I wanna simplify it. I want it so that my team, the, the state of California, everyone who, who's engaged can understand what we're doing. And so like our mission statement, there's really, it's why do you exist as an organization and try to simplify it as much as possible. Mm -hmm. and, and as you said, um, for the vision, it's really where do you want to be in 20 years or 50 years or whatever it might be. And so we, we over the last two days, I've spent with my executive board team um, talking through all of this and coming up with, with a very simple draft mission statement and draft vision statement that we are going to share very soon publicly to provide input and engagement to see, are we on the right track or are we missing something? And so 
I, I would say keep it as simple as possible, but but broad enough that it captures what you do. Thank you. Um, is there anyone else that wants to talk about opportunities and threats that we see in the future? Sure, yeah, I would say perhaps political polarization might be one of them. Um, <laughs> it's all good. Um, yeah. I'm very intrigued about Nor Northern California over there. <laughs> <That quadrant>. <laughs> <laughs> Without going too, too much network name. Yeah. Um, I guess I should say something since I, I didn't, uh, first of all, Julie, thank you so much. Um, and Blair for, for enlightening, um, us on your process, uh, you know, doing a strategic plan is, is it, it's a big deal. Um, it's a huge undertaking and I uh, congratulate Caltrans and the director Tavares for, for taking this on and, and for you, chair eager, um, and, Director Taylor and staff for for getting us in this room and really talking about this because then it really kind of it's upon us to sort of open ourselves and lay bare our our own values as we you know as we um, do our work in the commission. Um, it, it it's it, it'll be an interesting process and and these questions are kind of heavy as you know we're we're learning. You know what Caltrans is doing, and now how are we gonna, how are we gonna do this as a commission and with individual different um, ideas and values that each of us bring? It's gonna be interesting how we can find alignment. And I see a lot of alignment in terms of our intent and what we want, where we want to move the state. Um, I see a very interesting cross, you know, kind of crossroads that we've. Um, find ourselves in transportation exciting, actually, because I think there is a, uh, I, I'll be careful how I say this, I don't want it to be misinterpreted, but kind of a culture change happening um, in transportation where, you know, there is an opportunity to open up to um, people and communities that have uh, historically been left behind, quite frankly. Um, and we've, we've all collectively um, have expressed how we could do better. Um, I know that for some it's not fast enough and for others it's like we're we're trying to, you know, we're trying to use the the mechanisms and the and the ways we've been doing things, but doing it better, you know, so that we're bringing people along. So it's you know, there's there's gonna be a little bit of that tension and I'm I'm looking forward to the discussion and and the, you know, kind of the honesty that we bring to this this conversation. I don't have anything like really tangible to add except for at least in my values and I've expressed this um to to you all before is that I really want to see you know just kind of borrowing from what vice chair Gordino uh, mentioned about California economy well what does that look like for for all people in California because it's different and how do we how do we bring in those communities and people that have been left behind and how do we um, bring them to give them the opportunities to thrive like many of us have, right? And that's, that's at least personally, I'm just going to, you know, lay it out personally, um, you know, what, what I'd like to see. Transportation is absolutely critical in the lifeblood to that. Um, but, you know, I've always thought that transportation isn't the goal. It, it is the tool to get, um, um, you know, people to, right? And so... I just wanted to start off there because we're talking about North Star yeah. and I look forward to our discussion and hearing from my colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Liu. Sure, thank you, Madam Chair. Right. I turn my mute button actually works. <laughs> I figured it out. There was a mute button. Um, I think, you know, you, you mentioned the the threat to funding from, I mean, from the deficit, obviously the, the ongoing threat to funding from people paying less gas tax mm -hmm. um, and eventually less diesel tax too. Uh, we recognize that as one of the sort of the fundamental threats that we have to us being able to do our job. And I think along with that are also those critics and skeptics out there who don't trust us and don't understand how we might be able to 
replace that revenue stream with a different revenue stream. Um, I think that's a threat to us. I think on the opportunity side, and we obviously saw it happen with SB1, there is a lot of people who support what we're doing and a lot of people who can and should and probably will come together in a very powerful and broad coalition to address the threats that we have. So I think our supporters are a, um, an opportunity, the broad coalition, um, if we can get on the same page, and I think we're getting close in terms of, of what Commissioner Falcone was saying, that to getting a consensus on our direction forward, then we can have a very strong uh, coalition that can get things done. Um, and that's a good opportunity. So those are the two that just popped up in my mind as, as most um, prevalent. Thank you. Um, I want to welcome Secretary Omashakin. I understand you've joined us. I did. A very good morning. I am. Uh, hopefully, you can you can see me. I'm in a I'm in a hotel in in San Francisco. I mean, uh, uh, getting mixed up. I'm in uh, Los Angeles, actually. <laughs> <laughs> They're oh, interchangeable. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit all over the place. Um, I, I'll, I'll just add some uh, brief comments. Uh, Chair Eager, uh, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Appreciate the uh, opportunity to, to engage a little bit in this work um, that the CTC is doing related to your strategic plan. Um, I'm glad uh, Director Tavares is, is in the room as well. I heard I was coming on as um, he was making some comments about the efforts, the efforts at Caltrans as well. Um, and, and to the rest of the commission, uh, th thank you all and, and the director. Thank you all for uh, the work that you're doing in the, this process that you're uh, that you're undertaking. Look, uh, to just my quick reaction to some of the discussion and um, uh, the questions that are uh, on the screen in, in, in front of me here that I'm looking at, I, I agree with most of the comments, actually. I, I think you guys are on the right path as far as um, what we need to be paying attention to, as far as like, you know, the process, as far as like, you know, whether it's brief or short and what the vision entails, all those things, I try to stay out of that. But the bigger picture issues that we're seeing we're trying to figure out like what are the priorities that we need to be paying attention to over the next 20 or 50 years in transportation for California. That part of it, I'm, uh, I'm in complete agreement with everything that's been said. Uh, I will say that when I think of your organization, however, the CTC, uh, the financial component uh, really comes to mind. Uh, the uh, the fact that you, you're stewards of a, a lot of billions of dollars for um, transportation for the state, um, those uh, making sure the money is spent in a prudent, uh, uh, appropriate way, the direction that we're taking transportation um, is one on the financial, uh, from a financial standpoint, like prudent and uh, that it's being spent in a direction that we're sending the state uh, for, for transportation. Um, and uh, the fact that you know, there's this obvious uh, looming threat when it comes to um, how transportation is funded. Uh, I don't go into a city where, in a state where that's the question that I don't get is what's gonna happen with the gas tax or the diesel tax? Comes up almost every single place that I go, when are you guys gonna make the transition? Everybody's buying a Tesla, da da da. I got that last night at an event. So, making sure the money is spent appropriately in the direction we want to go to, but also what role does the CTC play in making sure that uh, we are uh, starting to uh, slowly make this inevitable, inevitable uh, transition for how transportation is funded. Mm -hmm. um, the last thing I'll say just quick, um, and I think this is where Commissioner Falcone was, the, the comments I heard her making, or, or she was alluding to uh, is we have to keep history in mind as we move forward. Not that we spend all of our time in history, 
but we have to keep it in mind as we're moving forward. And I heard all the commissioners, including you, Chair Egan, mention this equity component. And I can't stress that enough. You know, I, I was thinking about it just recently, uh, redlining, urban renewal, yeah. the proliferation of highways through underserved communities. Those were intentional efforts. They didn't happen by accident. Those, that was, there was people saying, no, 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 we, we need to keep this group out of this place or we're gonna build this through that community because it's the path of less resistance. So if we were making those intentional decisions in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, our part of our responsibility is to absolutely reverse that and be making intentional decisions to lift up those folks. Um, and as we lift them up, it truly means an opportunity for everybody uh, to rise um, in, in this state. So uh, just, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll leave you with that. The intentionality has to completely be there uh, using the EAC, using the commission and using our staff to reverse uh, this, this history that we're still uh, pushing our way through. I'll leave it. I'll leave it there. Hopefully, that that uh, gives you a little bit of some food for thought. There, I don't know if anybody has questions for me, but my quick thoughts on that. Uh, thank you, Secretary Omashakin. and um, I mean, we. I, I think these discussions as we move forward with this uh, strategic plan, all of those things will come into play, and you know that has to be the top of mind as we say, you know, here's those next steps. How does that relate to um, fixing that? Um, history that that we've all been trying to right as as we move forward through this process so uh, we certainly appreciate that um if we don't do that i'm sure you'll remind us hmm. don't forget uh <laughs> that's that next step um does anyone else have any questions or comments uh or either as it relates to what our north star is any threats or opportunities um commissioner norton yes i think really thinking about the um, the North Star of how we are the foundation of the economy is really, really important. I think not only the jobs we create, but the jobs we deliver people to. And in my work that, and especially about making it safer to use transportation at all times, day or night, we're an aging state. We have a state with Many, many people who are disabled, 15% of the entire population is disabled. What are we doing to make it possible for people to move and live their lives and attain jobs? Because when I talk to workforce investment boards, they're saying we don't have a talent problem in this state. We have a transportation and a child care problem. We need to figure out how we deliver people to the jobs they need so we can have the state we want. And I think that's what's exciting about the governor and the secretary and director um, Tavares's message about how we deliver that hope and that economy while also within itself looking at how we are equitably um, opening up opportunities for communities to be part of the solution at the local level and at the state level to build it, to be part of it, to have infrastructure be the place making it once was and not have it be the way that communities are separated but are, are how communities are united and I just really take uh, a moment about how that vision under Governor Newsom has really been part of the, the sort of California hallmark uh, especially as we're working towards our environmental um opportunities to move away from diesel and into zero emission. I just think the amount of work that has been done um, and that is part of our opportunities. And, and I think that's not enough communicated about how all these opportunities and what we're doing here at CTC and, and our financial stewardship and the partnerships we have are actually what's part of the next move about our economic um, revitalization. And that's why I, I appreciated um, Vice Chair Gardino's point about the economy. And I was sharing the same things in, in terms of that economic goal, so. 
Thank you. I think your your point of <clears throat> transportation infrastructure in the past had torn people apart, and now we're going to use it to bring people back together. Because uh, you know, I, I think we all understand that this is a time in our history that we can make those changes. Right. You know, the federal government has said, "Okay, we believe in inf infrastructure again." Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. The state of California, with this administration, said, "We believe in infrastructure again. Let's do it." So. I, I wholeheartedly agree that now is our time that we can actually make those changes mm -hmm. in the future, uh, fix those issues that you talked about, uh, Secretary Omashakin, that uh, infrastructure separated people in the past. Um, so as we put our strategic plan together, that is certainly that North Star, yep. is how do we bring people back together to support infrastructure because you know, Secretary, I mean, uh, I called you Secretary Norton. How about that? We'll do that. Uh, <laughs> she has a plan, Secretary. Watch out. <laughs> um, <laughs> Commissioner Norton ha and I had talked about this um, at dinner the other night of infrastructure is not a bad word <laughs> that, you know, we need to get people excited about, you know, what those possibilities are so long as we do it right. Um, so thank you so much for bringing that up. And um, Commissioner Lugo, your turn. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Eager. Uh, I wanted to just add on, you know, in addition to the opportunity we have to, uh, you know, define a North Star for infrastructure, uh, it will also be important for us to consider the elements beyond infrastructure that are so key to actually shifting transportation behavior in our state. And so thinking about the human infrastructure, the relationships and the kinds of investments we can be making in jobs and in uh, community led efforts to support people changing over and using our infrastructure systems differently. Um, I look forward to seeing how we can incorporate that in our vision as well. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Bradshaw. Uh, yes, good afternoon. And, and thank you, Secretary Omashak and, and uh, Director Tavares. And all the comments from my fellow commissioners. Sorry, I had to step out for a minute. Uh, there's a few people that call that I have to take that call, but I apologize. I don't mean it. Just... Your wife calls. <laughs> yeah, that's one. But yeah, so <laughs> thanks, Carl. Um, but I mean, no, I mean, I mean, no disrespect. This time is time is precious. Um, I want to go back to uh, Secretary Omashak and a uh, couple of things he said because it's been the battle cry uh, in my day job fight for housing yeah. uh, and, I, and I just really believe, and I guess I may get a lot of this from my dad, but he, he used to say, you know, uh, I'll watch my words, but uh, BS is BS, but it often just comes by different names. And I, what I always took out of that was that, uh, and that's not at you, Secretary, I'm gonna brag about what you were saying. Um, <laughs> the, the uh, I realize I can be misconstrued, so let me, let me circle let me circle around the barn quick. But what I what I took out of that- was something else. What I also <laughs> always took out of that was that to be straight, right? And if you believe in something, you know, be straight about it and then try to find allies to that. And even on that, you will remain in that process, try to remain open-minded and seek consensus. And uh, if, you, if you know my dad, he could say a one-liner like that, and you actually could draw those kind of conclusions out of all that. So as you talked about pulling up, Secretary Omashakin, that's really what it's about. And um, at the risk of being a broken record, the vast majority of Californians are not at a place where, where you're hearing about it, Mr. Secretary. Everyone's getting an EV. Right. Everyone can get towards multimodal systems, right, on very important things we need to do. The connectivity is not there. The systems aren't there. And the broad majority of the working class, particularly those involved in transportation, have to, due to the unaffordability, I would add to uh, Hillary's comment earlier, child care cost housing costs, transportation costs. We talk about we're losing revenue from the loss, the changes in the gas tax, et cetera, which needs to happen. And we need to find real solutions to that, to look at all types of transportation. In parallel and in alignment to that, in a, and I just know it really well, um, from workers who are out in that 
economy broadly. I mean, no disrespect to anyone else, but when you have a job that relies on a lot of different factors for that job to be there, which is the construction industry broadly, um, setting aside unionized conditions or even just legitimate employers, we have at a minimum just in one industry, 335,000 hyper exploited workers that aren't just subject to underground economy, they are subject to human trafficking to build the homes that are allowed to be built in our state. And I emphasize allowed, right? Because in general, the politics, you think politics and transportation can get interesting. Try the politics of housing in the state. So not to get off track, I hope, but North Star, and I believe we heard it from every single commissioner, which I applaud everyone here as friends, brothers, and sisters, and allies, honestly, because I believe the heart is true, but it's a multi-pronged approach, and we don't control housing policy. I don't expect us to do that. But to keep that in mind, when we make decisions, they're going to impact directly tens of thousands of working class folks that no fault of their own and things they don't control. These solutions that we're going to push forward, we have to always keep that in mind so we don't create a bigger problem. And unfortunately, within the Bay Area, we're seeing poll after poll talking about bonds for transportation and what do the voters want to see. And unfortunately, um, they do not want to see investment over just the polls I've seen. They don't want to see investment in mass transit, right? That connectivity that I talk about, the workers are up against because there's no way to get from one county to the other effectively for a working class person. They want to see roads fixed, right? They do care absolutely about the pollution created, you know, relation to the uh, underserved communities in particular, you know, but when you start talking about tax, taxes, bonds, there's huge resistance and frustration. Mm -hmm. So I just want to share that perspective as well. And thank you. Thank you for letting me quote my dad too. That's awesome. <laughs> dad. Yeah. Yes, yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out we were related. Yes, exactly, I'm sure. Um, anyone else want to add anything? I'll just add because my brother Jay started to talk about a great subject <laughs> that we're both very involved with. And I do want to thank the secretary for his comments and his commitment uh, to improving our transportation network in California. And I know, uh, and I said this before on this dais, that we all have a common goal um, as commissioners and staff is to make a California a better place for everybody from the top down, mm. uh, especially working people. Uh, working people in California want to be part of a solution uh, when it comes to transportation, mm -hmm. uh, not just because of the cost, but also because of its effect mm. in the areas where they live. And that's lack of um, access sometimes, mm -hmm. that's air quality, uh, and that's choice. That's right. um, you know, many of the folks I represent uh, have to drive uh, a car or a truck every day to get to work. And it's 40 miles one way and 40 miles back. Um, and they don't have it, very many options at this point. Um, but they do care about clean air. Mm -hmm. They do care about clean water. Mm -hmm. um, they're stuck now in, in, in this fight about affordability mm -hmm. as far as housing and those options. So we have an obligation to, to continue to work hard to, to ensure that our state are, is meeting those goals uh, that working people, disadvantaged communities have a seat at our table, right? So they have a voice in the choices that we make. And I'm pretty confident uh, as a body uh, that we will put our best foot forward. And I'm proud of the work that we've done. I look forward of working with Caltrans and the secretary on good things in in the future. Uh, and I will say as the laborers, we're not the organization of no when it comes to climate change or GHG reduction. We're the organization of slow. Let's get this right. Mm -hmm. Let's include everybody and let's make solutions for the long term for our kids and grandkids that work for them. So thanks for the opportunity. Thank you, Commissioner mm -hmm. Grisby. Commissioner Grisby. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and just wanted to thank all the commissioners for your prior comments, and um, particularly Commissioners Bradshaw and, and Cruz. Thank you for talking about the working class. Um, 
One of the things I'm really um, focused on and interested in is how do we have a better connection and understanding of how projects connect to the economic development plans of the regions and the communities that they're in. Uh, that context would be very important. Uh, and um, to help us understand the balance that communities are, tr are trying to make between economy and environment and equity. Thank you. Secretary Omashakin. Yes, just thank you, Chair Eager. Just, just very briefly, um, as I'm listening to uh, all, all the commissioners and, and, and your comments, um, uh, you know, Commissioner Cruz and Commissioner Bradshaw, uh, just everybody just spoken again uh, just, just recently. I can tell you that um, I, am, uh, I am proud to be associated uh, with you all uh, and the work that lays ahead. Uh, what you're describing, what you're mentioning, everything from workers, economy, housing, and the nexus with transportation, uh, I think are the right conversations for us to be having. Um, uh, we haven't talked about safety much, at least since I've been on. I mean, that's when you think about that core four, economic prosperity, climate action, uh, equity, and safety. Uh, it covers a lot of what we've just uh, discussed uh, in this short time that I've been on, but, but I'm proud to be associated with you all in, in your leadership roles on the commission. Um, the challenge is going to be how do you get this important conversation you all are having, how do you get that to uh, be transcribed into a plan, a strategic direction for four to five years? Um, and how do you make sure uh, uh, all the entities that have a role to play in it, uh, that they can carry it out. Uh, but is it the right conversation? When uh, absolutely spot on. Uh, I just I just want to tell let, let everybody know that proud to to just hear you guys um, talk about um, the the connections beyond transportation. Uh, I think it may have been Commissioner Falcon who said this is this is this is a tool. Transportation is a tool. Uh, it's not the it's not the end. Uh, it's a means to an end. Um, and that means to an end is connected to everything that was just mentioned, opportunities for people to work, um, you know, labor, um, housing. Uh, if you check what's the second most expensive thing that Californians spend their money on, uh, it's very close to housing, it's transportation. It's a high number two. Uh, so um, look, I, I just want to share that in, in, in my final thoughts and comments to y'all. Like, this is absolutely the right conversations, uh, conversation rather uh, that you're having. But how do you get it up to paper uh, to be in alignment with where the governor uh, is taking a state, and um, how do you carry it out? That's because it can't just be on paper and sounds good. Everybody say the right thing, and we're not doing anything about it. But thank you. Thank you so much, Secretary. And um, I, I think I speak on behalf of all our commissioners. We're we're proud and humbled to uh, be a partner with you, also um, as you move things uh, through the state. And and with Director Tavares, I I think you probably heard today uh, the passion that this particular commission has of doing this right. Um, and certainly, you know the. The daunting task of how is it that we do put that down on paper, um, but then also the follow through, because we can do a strategic plan all day, every day. And if we don't follow through and make sure we monitor that for the next 20 or 30 years and put it into practice, it means nothing. And so um, you certainly have uh, uh, that promise from this commission um, that that's our goal. Uh, we plan on um, ensuring that all of these ideas get put together in our strategic plan. And, you know, I do want to make sure I say a thank you, a special thank you to the CTC staff. Um, this has been one of uh, my goals as chair in the last uh, two years is to get a strategic plan started. Um, and this staff has said, you know, it, it takes forever, uh, <laughs> which we, we get that. We see that now. <laughs> um, but to start this and start this partnership with Caltrans and say, here's, here's how we get it going and, and getting all of us to start thinking about where do we go from here? So I, I do want to say a special thank you to the staff for, um, kickstarting this for us. 
we we promise we're going to continue with this in the future. Um, we're not going to let this go here today. Uh, we have we have too much passion um, to do that. So um, with that, I would also like to ask if we have any public comment. Yes. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to appreciate you all for talking about strategic planning on the planning. Uh, or I guess I'm actually, a I'm a transportation planner by training and I'm working on my master's. Uh, I guess for the record, I'm William Walker, chair of the Interagency Equity Advisory Committee. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And my remarks have not been like voted on. Like we haven't met to discuss this item. So I just wanna say that. But um, I think I've been riding transportation enough in California for 40 some odd years to, to, to have a few comments about this process. And I wanna appreciate Chair Ager for, um, and I think you've all kind of touched on this, but I, but Chair Ager, you it's explicitly stated that the strategic plan for the CTC would be aligned with both uh, Caltrans and CalSTEF. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's extremely important. Um, and I want to also appreciate Commissioner Lugo's comments about making sure that um, the, the types of uh, strategic planning that we're doing address the negative externalities of our transportation infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Our communities are still divided by freeways. Um, mm -hmm. So the, the, they were definitely divided and some, like I live a block from a freeway and you know, that's, that's the hardest walk. Like when I leave my house is to go to where all the good burritos are across the freeway. <laughs> um, I have all the good dim sum on my side of the freeway, thankfully. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, let's let's talk about access. Yes. Good burritos. That's on the list. It, I won't. It, I won't be remiss to also honor um, Secretary Elmashakim for his comments. Um, so it, it made my comments a lot shorter. Um, so I appreciate you acknowledging that. Um, and but I will say that when I heard um, Miss Julie K. She's on Zoom, right? She's on yes. Zoom. Yeah. Yep. Uh, speak about um, two items, um, advancing equity and livability in all our communities. I think that what Secretary Mashakin stated is something that we also need to operationalize in our mission moving forward is not just the, the positive, um, you know, affirmation that we want equity and livability to be honored, but also to talk about the the change that we would like to see because of what has happened to underserved and um you know underrepresented communities so that has to be explicitly stated and i appreciate the secretary for doing so um i'll end with saying that at 30 years old i bought my first car i'd already been driving for 11 years but i never owned my own car um i actually bought my mom's probably like her second or third car in her life. She went 10 years without a car too, which is why I rode transit for so long. Um, and the next year I finished my AA um, and, you know, subsequently graduated from college, which doubled my salary. And um, it allows me, you know, I, I could have taken BART to Dublin in a bus here actually in less than two hours, which I was ex extremely surprised, but I would have missed this part of the meeting. And I, mm -hmm. I mean, there's just something about being present to actually, you know, give this testimony and I had the privilege to be able to do so today. And um, lastly, American Airlines, one job I did hold um, in recent memory. Um, I started at three in the morning. We, we, we spent billions of dollars to get a transit system to have a station directly at the airport. <laughs> you can't take you the transit there, yeah. <laughs> to the airport. Yeah. So let's be strategic about how we invest in our transportation so that we can take, I would have loved to take BART and, and not have to like worry about, you know, people leaving the bar, unfortunately, speeding along Interstate 280 mm -hmm. near where I live. I would have loved to walk a block to BART. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you know, so, yeah, some of the things I just wanted to say um, that William talked about and the division, um, all we have to do is walk out these doors and go a few blocks right over here and you see what uh, <clears throat> the railway did in dividing the city and then the freeway again. Um, and so as we look and as we, 
you know, drive or, or take transit um, through our local cities, there's proof of what we need to go back and fix. And we don't have to walk very far to be able to see that. So yes, Commissioner Liu. I know we weren't focusing on our strengths, but I think it, as is clear from, from William's testimony, one of our, our key strengths is our external advisory committee. Mm -hmm. um, and I think uh, uh, Commissioner Norton men mentioned um, that we create jobs and support the economy. That's obviously a strength. I, I would also say that our staff is a huge strength of ours. Mm -hmm. They're incredible in what they're capable of doing and the efficiency in which they work. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm just shocked. I was shocked to find out how few staff we had when I was a yes. yeah. I was like, how do you get all those billions of dollars out the door? Mm -hmm. Well, you do it, and, and it's amazing. Um, and I think we also probably underappreciate the fact that we do have a lot of money to spend, uh, especially compared to last, uh, you know, past commissions. Mm -hmm. Right, Commissioner Guardino, there were times where you had no, no money to spend. There were times, right? So we do have money to spend. So those are all strengths of ours. Um, yeah. And I was I was fiddling around with what might be a North Star statement, but I think it's maybe more of a tagline. Um, but I had to amend it because of William. Mm -hmm. So now it, now it reads, um, we support and improve mobility in California so that one and all can have access to good burritos. There we go. <laughs> 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 do we have any other public comment okay do we have any other comments or questions statements from commissioners um can we maybe talk about next steps okay so a couple of immediate next steps because I, I will be honest julie did say this is a long process to get under contract but the that doesn't mean that we have to stop the conversation. So one of the things we can do is we can take what we've heard today, we can summarize it, send it back out to commissioners for feedback to make sure we've captured the things that you all have said and that things that you all are in, have found important and kind of trying to find that North Star. Also ask the question of, is there anything missing? Because I know after I step out of a room, there's that light bulb and, oh, if I had just said that <laughs> thing. Um, we can also, and again, we've only got 40 staff, so I'm going to, I don't want to kill my staff too. So I'm going to try to balance what we can do internally versus what we need a consultant to support us with. Um, we can take a look at what Caltrans is doing in their strategic plan and some of the other state agencies and supplement, maybe some of the things we didn't talk about here, but the things that we think might be important as we're defining that, that mission statement, bring it back to the commission for a discussion and have another one of these and I'll figure out what the time frame is for that, but. So with that, we want to say a special thank you to Secretary Omashakin and to Director Tavares and your staff, um, Julie and Blair. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and we look forward to doing this together in the future. And I know uh, Secretary Omashakin and Director Tavares and I have uh, met regularly to talk about how we do this together um, in the best interest of the state. And uh, this is one more step in doing that. So thank you. With that, we are adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Now you got to go amend the one you're working on to include access to the burritos, right? <laughs>